as a business strategist who have worked with clients both Michaela's size and Matthew's size, I'm going to weigh in on the optics of who is really in the wrong here and let you know what I would do if they were my clients. And in this video, I'm going to walk through exactly what I would do if Michaela were my client. So to put some things in perspective, when you are a creator that is Michaela's size, you are getting thousands of emails every single day from small business owners who are struggling, saying that if you don't do something for them for free, then their business will fail and they will not be able to feed their family. You literally have to pick and choose who you say yes to, and all of those situations are very intense. And I imagine this is one of the reasons why Michaela went out and said, oh, I only work with creators that are willing to take on the volume, because at some point, she has to find a way to pick and choose in an impossible set of circumstances. So when a business owner like Matthew comes and says, hey, I'm helping, I need you, it's not a wonder to me that she would be compassionate and say that she wants to help because that is a very heavy burden to bear. That being said, I'm absolutely flabbergasted that she did not put them in contract. The first thing that she should have done was say, yes, I'd love to work with you. Let's set up a time where we can go over the contract together and we can get it scheduled out. The very first thing she should have said to him was, I'd love to work with you. Let's get it in contract so we can set proper expectations here. And this isn't about her locking Matthew in. This is about saying that, hey, when I post something, times can vary. Um, also, just big picture. I'm not responsible for any business decisions that you make for your business. That is your responsibility. And if there's something that I post that you don't like, um, here's a non-disparagement clause so you can't go like bashing my name. And because she didn't do that, he is now saying that she does not care about small business. But here we are now. There is no contract signed. Now there's a bunch of hate videos going on and everyone is weighing in on their opinions saying how much they dislike her brand. So if she was my client, this is exactly what I'd do. We would need to remind the audience that she cares deeply about small business. I still believe this to be true. I do still think she cares about small business. I think she made a really bad business mistake. And now I think what she needs to do moving forward is make a dedicated spotlight day or a couple days each week where all the videos that she records or posts that week are all highlighting small businesses. Because part of the reason why so many of her followers loved her in the first place was that she was willing to showcase those indie brands. And by making dedicated days surrounding it where they could come and rely know that everything they see is from an indie brand, she would be involving them and making them a part of the experience. This would give her a dedicated place to put all of her requests to. Like if she's still getting those hundreds of messages from indie brands, she could say, no problem, I am rolling out a new initiative of a small business Saturday, I'd love to include you in that. But again, it's got to be in contract. No contract, no feature. But our friend Matthew is not off the hook. Make sure to watch for part two where I talk about how Matthew might have seriously injured his brand forever.